Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Ann Hine. I'm going to hang out here for just a moment as everyone catches up and finds us on the page. And then I'll put the camera on. Let's see what we're up to. Oh, we have a few people out there. I do have my comments up. Hi, Janie. Welcome. So if you, you can make comments today and I'll be able to answer those. So let me go over to the camera and let's see here. We'll go here and then there we are. Hi, everyone. So welcome, <clears throat> excuse me, welcome to Live with Janome. I'm Ann Hine. And today we're going to be talking about ambiance quilting. And this is both for your junior program and the full program. I'm actually going to demo in the junior program because I have some other things I want to show you as well. So let me see who's here today. Hi, Valerie and Lynn and Marty. Welcome, welcome. I'm sure we have others out there as well. Let me see what's up here. Yeah, we have a lot of people out there. All right. So if you have questions today as we go along, post them down below. Um, I do need to go back um, to yesterday and add some links in the comments. Uh, for our other Easy Does It quilting. So I just did an overview yesterday a little bit as I was at the office and lots of things were happening. I'm sure you could tell by the background there. I'm at, I'm at home today. So it's very exciting at the office. There's always lots going on. You know, I arrived on um, Tuesday and then um, we did some, I did some work, got some stuff done, and then they closed the office due to snow. So everybody went home. I go back to the hotel and then today, the next day, Wednesday, I went back and um, we had some other things to do. I did a presentation on Tuesday for um, another dealer for their quilting event they were having in store. So uh, some people watched that. I know some people commented that they saw me on that there. All right. So as I said, we're going to be talking about ambiance quilting and I don't, I don't have my samples out today. I've, I've showed them before. Um, but I have some other things I want to show along with it. So the ambiance quilting within Artistic Digitizer allows you to apply a stippling or an echo quilting or a scroll around your embroidery. So you can easily add that to uh, any most of the embroideries that you have. There's some that it won't, uh, it, your embroidery actually has to have a line or, you know, like an outline or a um, something so that they, the ambiance quilting can build off of that. So I'll show you a couple examples of how that works and how it doesn't work or, you know, it does work, but it just covers everything up, but you can rearrange that, of course. All right. So let me see. Um, let me go over to the software and we'll get started with that. And then as you have comments, please post them and I'll try to answer as I go today. So here we go to the software and let me open it up. It is over here. There we go. All right, so everybody should be able to see my screen and I will close. I have some extra windows here, so I'm going to move them out of the way. There we go. So this is the junior program. It looks the same, you know, when you open it, it looks the same as the full program. And just a quick review, if by chance you open your program and it looks like this and you don't see those videos on the side, there's a tiny little triangle here that opens. These are the videos built in. And then, of course, if you go over on our Genome Artistic Digitizer Facebook page, we have a whole plethora of videos lo located under the guides there. So if you uh, head over there, you can always find all of our extra videos under guides. And of course, on the page we're on today, all the videos that we do here are saved on this page. And of course, over on the Continental page, we have videos saved over there. So we have lots of content of all different kinds of things. So if you're looking for something to do um, or you want to watch a video to help you fall asleep at night, you can always pick one of these and watch one of those. All right. So let me go in and show you a couple of things. First off, I am connected to my CM17. And when I go into my artistic digitizer, I use the tabs that are over on the left hand side. Um, if I'm going to create something brand new, I'll open a new page. I don't use this one very often. This opens your files, and I am on a Mac, so it's a little different um, than normal than what you've been used to seeing. But I could select from here, and if I selected my desktop, this is what's on my desktop. But I don't see any. Um, whoops, I didn't really want to do that. I don't see any designs. 
uh, pictures of designs. I just see listings of things. So what I like, and I'm going to cancel that. What I like doing is opening the browse function and you can see the little icons that are here. I can see what's in my computer. I can see what's in a USB stick. I can see my machine. And what's cool about the machine part is you can see not only uh, your machine, but the ready to sew screen, the built-in drive, uh, the US, whether you have the either, either of these USB drives, if you have something in your USB drive, I don't know if I do today. Oh, I do have something in my USB drive. So you can find things in your USB drive as well. So you, you have access to so much when you are connected to your uh, your machine this way. I also have the cable connected. I'm gonna show uh, transferring by cable as well. So this is why I really like it. Um, I can also get to the, um, let me open this one up here. I can also get to, if I go down further, the uh, built-in samples. So these are all the designs that are in your machine loaded in your machine. Hi, Pilar from Peru. Um, you can uh, actually load these in and they only stay in here while you have the program open. But if you wanted to copy them and put them in a folder, you could definitely do that. So he, what I would do is I'm just gonna show you copying some of these. That way, if you're away from your, your machine and you wanna use these designs, you can do that as well. I just selected the first one. Then I went down here and selected using shift and click and selected there. So I have all of these selected. I'm going to right click and copy. Then I'm going to go up to my favorites and I'm just going to open the desktop. And in here, I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And I'm going to title this one. Let's see here. Machine designs. and hit enter again, and I'm gonna select it. I'll right click, and now I can paste. And it, yes, I want to do that. And now I have these 16 designs saved on a, saved in a folder on my, um, in my computer now. So they are, I'm gonna go here to my desktop. I'll go back to my desktop. Here's my folder with my, designs and there they are. So you can copy paste them over that way if you'd like. Um, you can also use them through embroidery link. So you don't have to bring them over one at a time. You can go to your machine and bring them over like that to work with them. Um, so that's one reason I love being connected to my machine. And I love using the software in this way. I'm I, all these things are available to me, which is really nice. I can get right there in uh, in my machine. Here's my USB drive and all that's in my USB drive. Uh, my ready to sew screen. Let's see what's on there. I have a little design there in my uh, ready to sew screen. I can get to that. So you have access to everything. I, I like that quite a bit. So what I wanted to do today is, and I have another USB in here too. Let me see where that one is. Uh, where's my class one? Well, let's see. <laughs> it's not here. I know you're saying these here, but it's not those. I have my extra USB drive plugged in and let me just make sure. Oh, there we go. Now it's on. And it, there it is. So I'm going to say yes, because I want to see them in the browser. And so here is my extra USB that's in my Mac at this moment. And I'm going to open this folder here. This is the folder for today. And these are some of the things that we're going to work with in here. So one of the things um, with using your ambiance quilting is you can take any design. And I'm going to take this design here. This is in our uh, machine, I believe. And it's a little mushroom design. So let me get in close. And if I wanted to put embroidery around that, I can easily come up here, have it selected. And you'll notice the tools have changed over here. If you're a full AD user, you'll notice there's some things missing over here. I am in the junior program. And if I wanna add uh, ambiance quilting, it's right up here under convert. And you won't see convert unless you have something selected. So I'm selecting under convert. 
I have um, the uh, auto border, convert to curves and ambiance quilting and convert to red work. And I'm curious, wait a minute, I am not in junior, I'm sorry. That's on my other computer. I was gonna switch over, but I guess I didn't. I am in the full program, I'm sorry. That's why I'm, today I was switching between the two. So up here, if you're on junior, you're only gonna have your convert to curves and your ambiance quilting. You won't have these others. Sorry for that confusion. So I'm gonna go to my ambiance quilting. And when it opens, you get this uh, window here. Over here, this is the size of your design. And over here is what it's going, to, the size of the embroidery, the quilting it's going to put around it. It's gonna make a box that's four by four. I can change that if I want my box to be, um, let's say five inches wide by um, maybe six inches high, I can put that in there. Down here, I can change from stippling to scroll or echo, and we'll do that in a moment. I'm gonna stay at stippling. And here's my density, and I'm gonna put my density at 0.22. You can, you can make it very dense like it was at 0.18, or you can make it a little wider. And then my offset, I think I'm gonna use an offset, or we'll see how 0.1 works. And I'm gonna hit okay. There we go, and I'm gonna back out so you can see. So it easily applied the quilting around my design. So in your junior program, you'll be able to do it just like that as well. And when you're looking at your sequence window, it does show up last. So it's going to do all your embroidery first, and then it will do your, um, your quilting at the end of there. And sometimes you'll see break apart, sometimes you won't see break apart there. Uh, if you needed to edit any of these, you can edit your, and junior, you can only edit your stitches. You do not have edit nodes. So let me see when I do that. To edit stitches for both programs, you need to go to auto so that you're in manual. And then you have to come in here. Let's see if I get that selected. I may need to break apart. Let's see when I break apart, go back to my Edit, there it goes. So you need to break apart. And now I can see all the stitch points. If I need to change anything, um, I can select them like this and I could move them like so. We don't have edit nodes within our junior program. So I'm not gonna show edit nodes. Our full program people will have uh, full use of edit nodes. And I always suggest to our juniors that if you can upgrade to uh, the full program. There is an upgrade kit, so you just have to get your upgrade kit and you'll have the full program. It gives you access to everything. So let's go back into my uh, browser window here. And I was playing with uh, this design here. I'm going to open it right here. So this center design is one of our new designs that's in a uh, special group of embroideries that you can go to your dealer and you can purchase through the dealer. We have a series of em large embroideries that fit our uh, RE46 hoop. And there's several, there's 22 or 24 designs in there. They're from um, So Steady. So they're like uh, quilting designs. And there's some from Embroidery Library Urban Threads. So you can use those as well. And they're all in this one grouping. You'll see it on the Janome webpage. Uh, and I think they've posted it to our Facebook page as well. So these are large designs. There's, uh, the, there's a dragon, there's a peacock, there's a beautiful heart. Uh, there's a kitty cat with a butterfly. There's a butterfly wing. So there's all these designs that you can work with. And I really liked this bee design. And the center design is what uh, comes in the package. So what I want to do is I am going to just select my, uh, I'm going to take my center design, even though it's going to get some of the quilting, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to a new page and paste it here. And then I need to ungroup it. And I'm going to delete this quilting I put around it here. So we don't, we don't need that quilting. I'm going to select it down here and delete. All right. So this is what the design looks like. And I really like this design. And I wanted to put a little bit of quilting around it. So to do it for this design, you would select your design. Again, go up to convert, 
go to your ambiance quilting. And of course, juniors will see it right there. And again, this is the size of my design. And this is the box it's going to make around it. And I really want, I'm going to move this over here. I do want it as wide as the design. So I'm going to make it 10.8. And then, oops, let me go back here. It helps if you type correctly. There we go. And for my height, the height of my design is 11. And I don't really want it to fill the whole, I could fill the whole hoop. Let's do that first. This is an, about an 18 inch hoop. So I'm going to do 18.0. I'll show you this first. With, um, and we're going to use the uh, echo and we're going to do the clip on border and i'll say okay and there it is so it did my echo quilting and it went a little bit inside and outside and it did it on parts of it and not parts of it so i don't really this is one i don't really like how that came out so i'm going to undo it and i'm going to try again and i'm going to go to my convert ambiance whoops not that one undo that let's go back in here and get this again let me see if i let me group this design and see if that helps us today because i'm copying and pasting it from other ways grouping it may help keep those pieces together so my width is going to be 10.8 and then my height I'm going to make my height because my it's 11. So let's make it 12.5. Um, so it's just a little bit beyond the design. I'm going to do the echo quilting and I'm going to do OK. There we go. All right. So you can see on this one, it came inside. I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that at this moment. It didn't do it earlier. So I'll show you when I go back to my B runner. Here we go. When I did it earlier, it went on the outside like this, as you can see here. And it did do an outline on the inner side of my piece. And then I took the B out and I copied the B. So let me take the B. And this I found really fun to do too. I took my B over here and then I actually put three of them together. So I'll show you my final. There we go. I put three of them together. And when I selected them, I made my quilt my quilting just as a little bit wider than what the bees were. All right, so let's show you how I did that. Took this, let's rotate this 90. And I duplicated it, I mirrored it, and then I brought it down here. So it's a little bit apart. There we go. And I duplicated it again and mirrored it and moved it up here. So I have my three Bs where I want them. Let's put this one inside. There we go. And I selected them. Then I went up here to convert ambiance quilting. Now, when I look at my uh, chart over here, it shows my width is 5.2 and my height is 17 so i could go with a height of 18 here that would fill the hoop and my width it says 5.2 so let's see what happens when i use like a five like a 6.0 on there and i'm going to do the echo quilting and okay there we go so it went completely around those which is really nice and that clipping means it cuts off here uh, where, where some of these edges are. So it'll, it'll make a, a clip there. And it went a little bit between them. So that's pretty cool. So I could use this in a border if I had a border on my quilt and I, or even a border, if I just wanted to do a, a border strip, maybe I'm making something for a, a bag. I've really been thinking some really cool ideas with different uh, pieces. All right, so let me see. I think everybody's still out there. Everybody's so quiet today. All right, let's go back in here. And I want to show you using a, um, well, I'm going to show you this one in just a minute. Up here are some folders. And today I went out to Daily Art Hub and I downloaded a few things. But one of the things we have in our um, 
machine is we have this fun frame. This is actually a um, fringe frame. So after you stitch it out, you can clip in the back. It tells you in the manual which way to clip either the threads in the background or the very edge here you clip and this makes fringe. So it's really kind of fun. And this is an, an embroidery design. So you'll see over here that it's raw data. And if I wanted to make an edit to this, I would have to convert it to curves, but I'm not gonna do any editing with it. I'm actually going to create some, a design for the inside and add stippling to it. And the one of the designs I had played with earlier was this little bunny guy. And he is a, he's a graphic I brought in and converted. Now I haven't finished playing with him. So he's a little rough. Okay. You can see when I get close, let me take his backdrop away and you'll be able to see him a little better. All right. So he needs some work up here, but I just wanted to show you how I can include a graphic and some uh, quilting together. So I'm going to select him again. And I'm going to just copy him and take him into my frame and paste him here and make him fit my frame. Maybe a little bit smaller. There we go. There we are. So I'm going to select him and I want to have my quilting around here. So this is really a cute way to add. If you want to use this frame, uh, with a, an embroidery, it's very easy to do. So I'm going to have him there and I'm going to go up to my convert and ambiance quilting. And one thing before you start, you might want to figure out how far apart this is here. So you can use your measure tool and let's see what this box is. I think it will tell me, but I just want to be sure I'm working with a measurement. So it is inside here a little less than three inches. So I could go with a three inch box. So that's selected. Let's go to ambiance quilting. I can make my height and width 3.0. There we go. I'm gonna do stippling. So I'm gonna change this to stippling. I'm gonna keep it at this density. I mean, I could make it, uh, you know, like one uh, point, one eight, that's a little tight. And my offset's the same, I'm okay with that. So let's go to okay. The offset is how close your stippling gets to your embroidery. So there we go. Now, if I change and it's on top, I'm gonna change that. If you make your uh, density less, you're going to get a tighter one. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll select that and delete that part. We'll go back in and I'll make my density less. So you can see here, let's make it a uh, point, two, I don't know, let's make it tight, one, two. And I'll make my offset uh, maybe a little closer, point, oh, let me see if that works. I'm always confused at which way to go with these numbers sometimes. There we go. So, oh, I didn't put my outside frame. So you can see we're closer and we're a little bit uh, denser. Let me see, what did I do here? Let's delete that. This is, oops, let's go back. We don't need to delete everybody. We just need to delete this part. There we go. Select him again. So, so you can see how you can play with this and get your density the way you want it, your offsets the way you want it, the size that you want it. I want it to fit inside here. So I'm looking to make my frame on the inside here, more like three inches. Yeah, I left it at four. So let's put that at three and three again. And if you're working with some of the same measurements, you can lock it there and we can make our density. Where was I before? Did I go? I think I was at one, two. That's pretty, let's go here. There we are. So that looks good. And it, it is a, a little bit on top there, but you can change that easily by taking your uh, stippling and coming in here and go to order and to backup design. And now it will be behind your piece. So I easily added it. I could stitch this together. It's a little, it's small. Let's see the final size here. It is about four by four. 
but I could make it into a little pillow to stick in, you know, with the fringe. You could put it in an Easter basket as a little pillow. Um, you could make it uh, as the pocket on a little pillow, which would be really cute, and then uh, have the fringe on there. So there's a lot of things, you know, quilt, you quilted that part of it. So there's a lot of flexibility you have with that. All right, let me show you one more thing. Now, I don't, how many junior users do we have any junior users out there? Give me the, uh, a heart if you're a junior user, because I want to show you a hack or a little tip for working with junior, because junior doesn't have shapes. And, you know, a lot of times when I'm creating projects, I need a shape. I might need a square if I'm doing it in the hoop project or a, um, maybe I'm doing a mug rug. So an easy way to do that would be to go to your uh, daily art hub and or a place where you can get, um, let me see, I think it's this one here. You can get outlines and uh, badges and things like that. Let me go back. I think it's this one here. Yes, this is the one. So these are all SVGs. Look at this cute one right here. Okay. Oh, good. We have a junior. So, Carol, you can get, uh, you know, clip art out there. It's, there's some sites where you can get them. And I, I like to bring in the SVG because it converts really cleanly. So I'm going to open this one. There it is. And this one is actually a couple of different parts. It has this inner, an inner border. Let's get in close. It has an inner border here. It has a bunch of dots and it has an outer border here as a satin stitch. And to me, this is the cutest. I think this would make a great mug rug and you would just have to add a couple of things to it. So I'm going to get my little mushroom guy over here because I like him. And well, no, I'm not do it that way. Let me delete this part here. Come here, you. There we go. Let's get this. Let's copy this and take it over here and we'll paste it and we'll put it in our mug rug. So I could, there we go. Let's put it in the center. If I wanna quilt all around this, if I wanna add some ambiance quilting to this, I would have this selected, go to convert, ambiance quilting. My design is, um, it's saying four by four, so it's going to put it, make a big square. But what I want to do is I want to show you something. If I select this inner border, I can see that the inner border is six inches wide by almost four inches high. So it's 3.8. So I can use that number, 6.0 6 for my width and 3.8 for my height. So if I select my piece again in here, go up to my convert ambiance quilting, and I said my width was 6.0, so I'm gonna use 6.0. And my height was 3.8, so let's put 3.8 in there. I'm gonna use stippling, and I'm gonna to touch okay. There we go. So look at that. I have the start of a um, mug rug right here. Of course, I could have added my, um, let me get this guy too. I wanna to get both of these pieces in here. So I'm over a little bit here. So I would move my, I would have to move my stippling and my mushroom. So let me see if I can go up here. If I go from here, there we go. And I could just move this over a little bit. There we go. And reshape it. There we go. We're good. Now, the, I could stitch it just like this. But you know, when you're doing a mug rug, you do need that, like if you're going to layer it up, and do the whole thing in the hoop, put your backing on, you need that outer part, correct? Everybody's shaking their head, yes. Now, in, in full version, I would go over here and use a shape and create it. But because I'm, I'm going to pretend I'm in junior, I'm going to use a part of this design for my uh, shape. So I want to come here. I want to go to auto. So now I have the parts of this design. I can take this part right here and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm just going to drag it up this way. Oops, and this way, till it's outside my piece. Probably a little closer. So I can use this as my stitch line. 
But when I select it, I can see over here, it's a fill and not an outline. So I need to uh, make it an outline so I can come over, I can right click on it and convert fill to center line like that. And I, there we go. And just select that now. Let's, uh, I don't know why it keeps selecting the rest of that. Let me make it a different color. That helps sometimes. There we go. So you can see there it is. And when I come into my my properties, I can go to outline running. And now I have that running stitch around the outside like that. So I created from my inner one, I created this outer line. So in junior, if you don't have, and I can't remember on the top of my head, if you don't have convert fill to center line, when you select that inner one, uh, copy paste it, and I'm actually gonna bring it down here to show you out of the way here. So it, let me bring it down because it's gonna be easier to see down here. So if you take this and I can uh, copy paste it to make my outer one, let's pretend I copy pasted it. And then if I go to uh, colors, I can pick a outline like that and you'll see it here. But see how it's two parts? It's on both sides of there, right? So I can come in here and delete the inner part. And I just have my two lines. If I select them and do break apart, I can select individual lines now. So you have to play around a little bit with the uh, figuring out the tools of the software. You have to trick it, a, what I call trick it a little bit when you're working in junior but you can get yourself an outer line that you can use for finishing your work. All right, how's everybody with figuring out how to do your, um, your quilting? This one here, if I wanted to make a fully quilted piece in there, I would just select it, go up here, ambiance quilting. My design is like, it's, it's going to want to, oh, that's not where I, it's, it's going to want to put quilting around it out here. So it's to get anything inside here, that's where you have to have a design inside and select your inside design. Does that make sense? Because right now, if I selected OK, it's going to put it outside. To get inside, you need to have a design on your inside. So let's undo that. If I wanted it inside that shape, I would put my shape inside. And I don't, I've got some extra pieces right here from there. And then I would select that shape. I would remember what my outer shape is. So maybe my outer shape is three by six. So in ambiance quilting, and I can put my, my width at six and my height at three. And then my stippling. Unless you wanna do like echo which I think is kind of cool. There's your echo. And if I made it four, it would go even wider. Does that make sense? Give me some thumbs up if you understand, or if there's something particular with ambiance quilting that you wanna see, let me know. If you're a full um, user, you can come in here and edit the nodes of the shape of your ambiance quilting. Let me come over here to properties before you do break apart. So you can see the, the dots around here and the, the dots here. So if I want, if I, oh my goodness, Siri's talking to me. Cancel Siri. So I can pull these down and it creates it. You can't do this part in junior because you don't have edit nodes in junior, but you can play with the shaping here. If I wanted this to come closer, I could grab these nodes right there, pull them. I'd have to pull them in enough to, there it goes, to bring my stippling in. So you have a few more controls with it. You can also do break apart with this selected. Let's go back up here and do break apart. And then if I do edit nodes, look at all those nodes, I can move. It's almost like too many. And 
let's undo. Let's go back up here, undo, undo, break apart. You can have your stippling selected. It's considered a fill, so you can't really change the type, the stitch that's in there because it's not an outline. So you do, let's see what happens. It's only going to give me the outline part. See how it made the design on the outline of that. It's different than the stipple fill. The stipple fill is a little bit different. All right. So let me think if there's one other thing. I just want junior people to know to go out to, let me go look here to go out and look for shapes like this if you're meant to make coasters and bags and you know badges and things like that here are some great shapes and you have the lines that you can convert to other things to use for your uh you know your stitching things together and so forth like when we make a bag okay so there's ways to get there's ways to get around it Though I do suggest, if you can, to move up to the full version. All right, I'm going to go back to the camera and see here. Here we go. All right, let me get this. There we are. Okay. So I'm waiting for a moment to see if there's any questions. You guys are so quiet. You must have some question down there. Um, oh, so the mushroom. No, the mushroom is, I believe the mushroom is in your uh, embroidery machine. And let, let me look, let me go back here. We'll look there. Let me go back to the software because I have the designs open. I actually have an easier way to find the designs. Let's see here, favorites, CM17 designs. I think they're in, let me see which one they are in. I have to think about it. Maybe favorites, pantry decorative favorites. Uh, not under there. I think they're in the machine already. I think that's where I got them. But I can never remember what folder they're in. Season specials, bracelets. These are all. I should have checked beforehand. I thought it was in the software already. It could be in the sample designs also that come with the software. I don't know if they're in here. But the ones I'm talking about with the, um, I'll go back here to me. The ones I'm talking about that come, that are in that new package, if you go to, um, oh, if you go to the Janome webpage, okay, the Janome America webpage, um, at the top, there's a there's a thing on the uh, promotions. And if you click on promotions and offers, you'll find out that they're there. And you can talk to your dealer about it. Your dealer has the um, promotional information on how to get those. You purchase them through your dealer. There's a, there's 20, I think there's 24 designs total. Plus there's a, a little thing that you, after you purchase your designs, there's six more that you can go and pick from Urban Threads Embroidery Library. So you have other designs you can go get from there. So there's either 22 and then the extra six, something like that. So that's through your dealer. I think they're offering it too as part of a, it might be part of a package for the um, CM17, but they are available separately. So if you wanted to purchase the design package, they're called HD Designs, I think is the name of them. And let me see if I can, pop out here and I'll see if I see them on the Facebook page because I know I saw them earlier today and I don't see where they are because they just announced them so if you go to the Janome not the not the Facebook page but to the web page you'll find them at the web page so let me go back up here and get my comments back on and see if we have any comments oh you're welcome yeah, I, you know, I think we forget that we have the ambiance quilting there. And I love, you know, the, the ones that you can't, um, if you have any, uh, like, just lightly stitched designs, some designs will not, um, your, your design needs to have uh, sort of an invisible outline to get that stippling. So sometimes the stippling will be on top of your design. So in that case, if you still want to use that stippling, just reorder in the sequence window, put your stippling first. 
and your design on top of it. And uh, you can do it that way. There are some designs that it just doesn't, they don't want to convert. They don't want the ambiance quilting. They don't stay on the outside of the ambiance. It just fills it right in. There's something about how the outside of your design is embroidered. If it has a, like a sort of a solid feel to it, then it will make the ambiance be on the outside of it. So you just have to play around with it a little bit. There's lots of ways to, um, you know, and you don't need to fill the whole hoop, you know, like those bees, I, you know, the bee is about four or five inches. And then I just did the, the quilting around that section of the bees. I don't want, I don't want my whole hoop filled. I can set the outside parameter of my um, stitching. So, and I've got, now I've got my head thinking of some really cool things um, with those bees. Uh, let me go back to my bee one really quick. I think I can show you something here. And I go here. Hang on one second. When I go back into my browser, not that one, my, my USB stick, where is my little USB stick? And someone had asked about um, transferring using the cable. To transfer using the cable, you do need your, you need to be connected to Artistic Digitizer. So here is my March one and this one here. So this is a, a large design and, and I would have to do, and I'm, I would do this in sections, but I think it would make an interesting table runner. Let me move it off the pink part so you can see it. Or like a centerpiece for a table. Let me come over here. And I would do this in sections. This is actually done it. It's actually created in sections. So I have my middle piece right here. That's one hoop. And each of these is a separate hooping around here. And then I would either bring it together using um, AccuSetter if I was on my CM17 and I could stitch my first one and then bring this one in and align it there. Same thing on this side, I could do that and bring it in. I did intentionally leave this open here. So you can see there's no stitching in there. Or if you want to, if you're not good at lining things up, you could, uh, stitch each of these sections separately and then join them and i was thinking i might i would join them with maybe a very tiny piping in here as well that might make it look really interesting um, on there you could uh, pipe between this section these sections here and then do a final piping here this piece here would probably be a long piece maybe i would um, put in a you know like a little uh, corner rectangle here and here so I've got to think about it. This, this section on the side here, this is 168 minutes. So this is a commitment. When you go to stitch that, that's a commitment on there. So, but the, just the things that you can do. Oh, I'm so excited. So very excited. All right, back to the camera. Oh, wait a minute. Before I go back to the camera, let me show you if I was going to transfer something to, let me find one of these that looks good that I would transfer. Okay. Not that one. All right. If I was going to send this to my machine, when I, I would come up here, I use this tab up here. You can come here and you have all your options. Some people like to go over here. They go to file and um, you would want to come down to export, not save as you'd go to export. You get the same options. Always save it first as what a draw file because you want to come back and edit it and then save it. If you're going to save it, save it as a, uh, a Jeff. I just save all mine as draw files because I'm always using them. I'm always having my software open and I send right from my software. I don't, but some people don't always have their, they want to be able to access their Jeff files without opening their software. So you can save it as a Jeff as well. So I would come up here and I have cable connection. So this is what the, this is what the, uh, it says USB, but it's cable. It's still cable. And I could ready to sew, I could send it right over. I could put it in my built-in or I can add it to a USB stick if I want to. And I would name it down here at the bottom. So if I'm gonna do ready to sew, I don't have to name it. I could just do that and send and it will go right to my machine. So let me show you the other ones. If I was going by wireless, I get the same window and I would just pick where I want to wirelessly send it. 
all right? If I wanted to put it on a USB stick, right? Here's my USB, click that. It's my no name. I'm gonna select it over here. It opens in the EMBF, MB, EMB folder, all right? And there's my EMBF. If I don't, if I don't save it, if I save it right now, it'll be outside my, and let's do that. Let's do that. We'll say outside EMBF so you can see that. I'm going to say export it. Now I'm going to go back in so you can see that. This is where it confuses most people. Right now, when I go to my machine and when I put my stick in, I'm going to see the EMBF folder, but I did not put this design in there. So I would use my left and right arrows in my machine to go find this design. Let me show you what else is on my stick. All of these folders are on my stick. Here's that EMB folder. When I click on it, there's my EMBF, and this is outside the EMBF. If I wanted to put a design in my EMBF, I would select it, and then I'm going to put inside EMBF like that and export. So now let's go back and look at my USB stick so you can see that. All right, select, select your USB stick on the side. You might have others. Select your USB stick. I know I'm in the EMB folder because I can see EMBF. Here's the one I put outside of it. And if I select my EMBF, there's the design that I put inside it. So when I go to my machine, there's my back arrow. When I go to my machine, I can select EMBF. How many of you, as soon as you see that EMBF folder, you touch it, right? It's like picking up candy. You got to have it. All right. So that's what I want to show you. This, this up arrow here takes me back up into another part of my USB. Same thing on the machine. That back up arrow takes you to another spot in your machine. Okay? All right. Let me put the camera on and say my goodbyes. And I will be seeing all of you. I'll be seeing all of you next week. Um, I'm done for the week. Uh, so we have Miriam tomorrow. And Miriam, we don't know what Miriam's going to do, so it's a surprise. She'll be over on the Continental Club page, so be sure to check her out over there. I'm sure she'll have something lovely for us. She always has some great things uh, to do. So join her over there tomorrow on the Continental Club page. And I will see you all again next week. Thanks for joining me today in the studio. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye for now.